There is new information today as well on that infamous Steele dossier. It was uh, named after British MI6 officer Christopher Steele, who was hired to compile the report as essentially dirty laundry on then-candidate Donald Trump. The report has been roundly refuted, even called, quote, garbage, by Bob Woodward, no less. Woodward, as you may know, is considered the foremost journalist in the United States in the movie All the President's Men was based on his reporting. We've always wanted to know this, though. Where exactly did Steele get the information that's in his report? We now know. The New York Times, among others, are reporting that the person who gave Steele the information is a fellow named Igor Danchenko, a Ukrainian-born, Russian-educated researcher who worked in the United States and traveled to Moscow to find the supposed dirt. Danchenko describes himself as a Russia-Eurasia political e economic analyst. And he was on the payroll of Steele's investigation and his firm in London. He also worked at the Brookings Institute, and he co-wrote with Fiona Hill uh, a paper on Russia's energy ambitions. Let's do more. Here's RT host and veteran journalist Ben Swan. Well, Igor Danchenko, that is the name of the person who is really the primary source for the Steele dossier. His Washington-based lawyer now admits that, yes, in fact, he provided source data and analysis for that dossier. Already, online sleuths had made the connection between Danchenko and the Steele dossier. So here's what we know about Danchenko. He was on the payroll of Christopher Steele's investigative firm, Orbis Business Intelligence, in London. We also know that he worked for the Brookings Institution. He co-wrote a paper with Fiona Hill in 2010 titled One Step Forward, Two Steps Back, The Realities of a Rising China and Implications for Russia's Energy Ambitions. Keep in mind, Fiona Hill became a centerpiece of the impeachment hearings as she had been on President Trump's National Security Council. But the most important allegations regarding Denchenko come back to the FBI notes from his interviews. Those notes show that he relied on a group of like-minded friends, including some drinking buddies, for those stunning allegations against President Trump and his associates, which, by the way, we have to mention, all of which eventually proved untrue. There were no first-hand Russian sources, and yet the FBI used the Steele dossier to obtain FISA warrants and wiretaps uh, on members morning, of the Trump everyone. campaign Thank based you. upon information in the dossier. The FBI told federal judges in its wiretap requests that the primary subsource was based in Russia. Now we know that Denchenko was not. We also know that in a follow-up interview with Denchenko in March of 2017, he admitted, he told the FBI that his subsource's information was, quote, not worth a grain of salt, end quote. And yet the FBI continued to press forward. So why is this so important? Well, simply put, because the entire Russia investigation from start to finish was based upon not multiple eyewitness accounts and source materials, but one source material, the Steele dossier compiled by Christopher Steele, paid for by the DNC and by the Clinton campaign, as well as some Republicans in the primary against then-candidate Trump. But as Senator Lindsey Graham put it after reviewing those documents specific to what Danchenko had provided as his subsource material, Graham said this, quote, that the information provided was second and third hand information and rumors at best. For the news with Rick Sanchez, I'm Ben Swan. And thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, here's George Galloway. He's a former British MP. Steve Gruber hosts the uh, Steve Gruber Show. My thanks to uh, both of you gentlemen. Hey, George, l l let me begin with you. W what do you make of this new report that this dude, Igor Danchenko, is uh, the, the, the source for the uh, Steele dossier uh, produced or by one of your fellow citizens there in Great Britain? Well, I forget who framed Roger Rabbit, but at least we now know who framed <laughs> Donald Trump. Uh, this uh, farrago uh, of lies, which was evident to many of us who know Russia well from the beginning, was a uh, pure invention. Turns out to be the invention. The framing was done by not a Russian, not even a Brit. Uh, but by a Ukrainian working in the United States. It is a farrago which adds up to, I think, one of the biggest hoaxes 
in world political history. And those responsible for it should be ashamed, but those who deployed it and weaponized it and destroyed the whole, basically, of the first term of a U.S. president have to be more ashamed because they must have known, uh, those in the know, in the FBI, must have known that this stuff wasn't worth the paper. It often wasn't even written on. And it has devastated the political system in the United States, paid for by the Clintons, paid for uh, by the Democrats, and paid for by some now departed in some cases. Uh, recalcitrant Republicans. But what damage has it done to the presidency, to the Constitution of the United States, to America's standing in the world? That's actually incalculable, beyond price, Rick. You know, it's interesting. I think uh, this is where the politics and um, the melding with the politics of all those people in our country who are literally paid to write about and foment and Steve Gruber, I want you to address this. There are people in our government, and they work within places like the CIA and in diplomacy. They keep their jobs by fomenting this uh, anti-China, anti-Russia, anti-Venezuela, name your, 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 sure. your enemy, so to speak. And these are the people who will gladly compile any report you want them to compile as long as it fits their needs. Russia bad, China bad, Ukraine good, whatever you want it to be, right? Well, as long as the check clears. Right. Let's not forget that. The check has to clear, Rick. Let's be honest about that. I'm still stuck with Roger Rabbit, but I'm going to work <laughs> through that. This is a cartoon uh, that we're dealing with in many respects, but it's a sad cartoon. And what's interesting, Rick, and I've thought about this several times, and maybe you have as well, uh, it was always the Russia, Russia, Russia conspiracy, but really, all roads kept going back to Ukraine. They still go back to Ukraine. It's not Russia. It leads back to Ukraine and the Brookings Institution now, which, by the way, everybody knows in Washington. It's a very far left-leaning think tank. It's associated with the Democrats, the DNC, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, et al., and more importantly, Joe Biden. All roads lead back to this same place. So Danchenko, uh, who also worked there at the Brookings Institute, as uh, Ben pointed out in his report there, uh, all roads lead back to the same group of individuals who have common goals. But, but as you talk about, Rick, the real power in government isn't the president, oftentimes. It's those in the structure around the president, because the president uh, is a tourist, really. They yeah, well, come. That, that, see, that, they that, go. That, that, that's my point. Uh, the, the Democrats were just doing op research. Everybody does op research. The, 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 right? This guy, uh, Steele, was a guy who used to work for the MI5, and then he needed a job, so he took a job making more money, filling reports of stuff he used to know and put his name on it. The other people he used are people who gladly would give him dirt on whatever they could make up or know about Russia. Sure. It, it's almost like people coming together, putting this collage together, none of which has any foundation. That, that's my point. It has nothing to do with the truth at all. It, it's all created. It's all manufactured. But, but You're see, spot see, on. You're but, exactly right. Exa but it, what's weird is within their own little silos, George, do you get me? Within their own silos, there's truth. It, it becomes a giant cabal of lies when you put it all together. It's what it looks like to me. Yes, these, these people are chaff. The big question is, why did the FBI yes. go off on this wild goose chase? Why did the Justice Department allow it to happen? That is the big question, Rick. These are great questions. Steve, you're a good guest, and so are you, George. I appreciate it. Unfortunately, we're out of time because we've had all this breaking news going on throughout this newscast. My thanks to both of you.